What's up, gang? Carlton Flowers here, your crypto pro. Yay! And I needed to get a quick OMI update for you tonight just to show you what's going on with the four hour chart and the one day chart and give my opinion, which is not financial advice, but just to give my opinion on this chart and why I am liking what I'm seeing. So let's dive into this four hour right here and get rid of my handsome face first. Here we are on the four hour chart and we have plenty of data being printed to the price line now that we have been on trading view since August the 2nd. This is nice. And so coming out of this, we have this uh, <clears throat> this progression here jumping out of the dog days. This isn't really the dog days, but we did have some nice low prices that was even before my entry price back here from August to the beginning, well, the entire month of August, all the way to the beginning of September, at which point we had the breakout. And then we have been hitting some higher lows and higher highs ever since then. When we came back down, we touched down on the 200 EMA line that just started getting printed on the chart the first week of September on the TradingView data. We jumped up to this high point, corrected back down to the 50 EMA line. And then we had this big spike right here, which is, it's just a wick, okay? And now we come on back down a couple of times where it looked like we were going to dive below the 50 EMA, but we never did make it down to the 200. It just kept on bouncing up and down around the 50 EMA, which is pretty cool. I'm very impressed by it. Now here we are, of course, sailing high above the 50 EMA, above our highest price node here on the VPVR, the volume um, <clears throat> the volume profile visible range. And we currently are sitting at a price of 0 0.0062. And it looks like we have a lower high for now, but we've just printed this little green candle right there on the four hour, which means we're not done yet. And so what I'm looking for is a high point that will eclipse this previous high that was right at about 0 0.00623 or four somewhere around there and we are on the brink of surpassing that now i think that there's a good chance that we do surpass that even though right now the stochastic is seriously in the oversold or overbought zone we're flying high in the overbought zone it looked like we were going to get a crossover of the fast and slow lines of the oscillators right there but notice how they're smooshed together and instead of the blue line completely crossing over like this, you see that it's kind of gone flat and it's sticking to the orange line, which is the slow line, but it's still moving upward. There's still an upward trajectory. In other words, this peak is not done yet. And then what we have on the lagging indicator with the MACD is looking very bullish. I like this because the oscillators are divergent and they're pointing upwards. And plus, we started to go down on the histogram here, but then we turned around and now the histogram is growing. So the green bars are back to moving upward. The oscillators are divergent. The distance between the two lines where the blue is pulling away from the orange and it is moving upwards. So this is exciting. Now, overall, this means we are in a definitive uptrend. This is the overall movement. Unlike Bitcoin and a lot of the alts that we have not seen absolute undeniable proof that we have broken the downward bearish trading channel, OMI has certainly done so. And this is enough data to prove that this is in a bullish trading channel. Call it bull market, bear market, it doesn't matter. Right now, overall, when you consider all of the price activity, we're on an uptrend, okay? That's the big picture. So there's your four hour. Now let's switch to the one day and see what that looks like. And then I'll show you why I'm so excited. So here we are on the one day chart. Let's stretch this out a little bit. <clears throat> and on this chart, each candle takes one day to complete instead of four hours to complete. So there are six sections of four hour candles on each one day chart, of course, because 24 divided by four is six. Look at this chart. We have absolutely 
created a trend here. Why? Because we have several successive higher highs. Now, let's just uh, count through them and put them up on the chart just to have fun here. This is number one. Whoops, we need the counter thingy. There we go. There is number one. And then we produced a higher high overall right there at number two. We have another one at number three. And we are already in the clear on number four. And the reason why number four is a higher high on the one-day chart and not on the four-hour is because of these wicks. You see, we wicked down and we closed those one-day candles below the starting point okay well you have your entry point and your exit point so in other words let's just talk about how one candle is formed and i'll explain this i'm going to start with blue and we're going to say that let's say on this candle right here whenever this candle started this is the entry price right there okay and then price went down it dipped down to this point but then it got snatched right back up to the entry point. Okay, right there. So that represents the candle bottom. And there's a wick here because we wicked out the low point because we went higher. Now, here's the thing. We came up to here and then here's the top of this candle. But then it crawled back down and closed right there. So that means at the closing point, anything higher than that is a wick. Anything lower than the opening is a wick. The candle body is everything in between. The color of the candle is green. Why? Because we started here and we ended at a higher price. Therefore, this is a green candle. Now, with the understanding of these wicks, we now see why this is a high and this is already a higher high. That is why. So on the one-day chart, this is a very bullish indication. It is a definite uptrend. We have a series of higher highs, one, two, three, and the fourth, and we're still going higher. Why? Because we have not even finished this stochastic cycle. Look at that thing. We're not even at the 80 line yet. This is the borderline between the neutral territory and being in the overbought condition. When you're in the overbought condition, there's buying going on like crazy. We're talking buying frenzy is what happens in this area up here. Okay, so here we are where the stochastic hasn't even gotten up here into the zone. And I imagine if we continue with this velocity and with the positive events that are going on with the company, we're probably going to bounce around in this area where it might not just be, say, one hump. We might get a two or three hump camel. I like to call this like a double hump camel when the stochastic does a double before it decides to go back down. Okay, so looking at the MACD, this is also bullish because we have a crossover that just happened of the MACD oscillators. The general trend looks like it's going up. And not just because this cross over here, it, overall, it's all trending up. Look at the peaks. We got increasing peaks, one here and one here. Now we just crossed over. We have increasing troughs. Look at this low point right here. Then we have a higher low point right here. So this is moving up. And then we're also printing this green bar on the histogram. So we just made our nice little dive into the red below the zero line. Now we're coming up on a green bar area with a crossover of the zero line. So that means we're moving up. Now on this trading view chart, we can't see what the price targets are because there's no price history up here that's old enough where we're gonna get the VPVR bars because we didn't start printing on this trading view data until August the 2nd. And I can't get VPVR where we have all of the price history with the BitForex exchange or any of the other ones that were trading um, OMI before we reached uh, OKEX. So that is all. Um, I think we all have a reason to really be excited. And this makes me want to invest more. I'm taking more chances on buying the NFTs on the uh, VV app because my investment is, is growing so much. I mean, when I know <clears throat> that I jump in at a point at, uh, let's see, point zero. 027 is my dollar cost average, DCA. I bought two big loads 
uh, they were at 0. 0.0026 and 0. 0.028 and change. The average cost was 0. 0.027 of those two orders that were roughly 500,000 tokens each. So I have a million and change at 0. 0.0027. And it's easy to do the math. All I have to do is add a few zeros to the current trading price. My portfolio here is worth about $6,330 right now. And that make, makes me feel good about the large bag of NFTs that I have on the app. I have over 450 items now. <laughs> I think its value fluctuates between, I think at the low point the other day was $42,000. And at the high point where everything was trending up based on market values, it was at $52,000. That's enough to cover. Now, once this thing hits a penny and starts to head towards 10 cents, I'll really feel better about taking chances on the NFTs because I have something to fall back on. If I make more gains with this and I end up losing my butt with the NFTs, which is impossible, I am covered. So therefore, I have the capability of taking more chances with swapping and trading the NFTs. How many do you own? Post in the comments. And does your NFT collection make you feel more secure about your OMI collection? Or does your OMI collection, your OMI bag, make you feel more secure about your NFT collection? Tell me in the comments. Share with me your thoughts and what, uh, what you feel about the current activity. That's about all I got for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and we'll have more very soon. This is Carlton and I'm out. <coughs> I'm out. <laughs>